So now that we've got the bleeding under control, the next time we go to change out those dressings, clean the wound, and kind of prevent infection, that's our next concern. You know, after stopping the bleeding, after worried about shock, you know, now we're worried about infection. So wound irrigation and wound closure techniques. Uh, contrary to popular belief, carrying a suture kit for anything other than gear repair doesn't really pass critical thinking. I worked in an emergency room uh, for a few years and I used to assist doctors and PAs with suturing techniques. Uh, and one thing that I can tell you is that suturing is not a bleeding control technique, especially not in a field environment. This is why, you know, EMTs and paramedics are not suturing people in the field. What suturing does for superficial suturing anyway is bring the ends of the wounds, the edges of the wound closer together to prevent infection and it also limits the amount of dirt and debris that can get inside that. Well, I can limit the amount of dirt and debris that gets inside that wound with dressings and bandages as well. But as far as closing that wound together to kind of promote healing and lessen the scarring, which is really what suturing is for uh, superficially, I can do that with some improvised techniques. Um, working with doctors and PAs in a clinical setting where we had outstanding lighting and a very clean environment and doctors and physicians assistants that are trained in suturing techniques that have been doing it for years on another person, mind you, and also with at least a local anesthetic. Uh, that's one situation. Now, if you are a lay person that don't have those skills and that experience and that environment, if you're trying to suture yourself in the field with poor lighting, poor conditions, dirty environment, without anesthesia, even if you have the proper equipment, it's probably not the best idea because again, it's not a bleeding control technique. So really, all you're trying to do is promote healing by bringing the edges of those wounds, to, uh, of that wound back together and lessen the scarring. Is it really that much of a concern to where you need to try to do this invasive suturing technique where you're driving more dirt and causing more injury to that tissue for what? It can be done when you get out of there and get back to the hospital. There's nothing that urgent that needs to be sutured in the field and that's why it's not done. Uh, so if you're carrying a suture kit, it's great for gear repair. Uh, it's great for sewing your clothing back together. But as far as sewing yourself up, there's no point in doing that in the field, really. Uh, at worst case, if you didn't get back and get a sutured in time, is you have a raised scar instead of a nice you know, clean scar that you're able to pull off with proper suturing. So enough about the suturing. Let's talk about what you actually can do in the field to promote healing that's non-invasive. Uh, there are three different techniques that I'd like to show you. Uh, of course, you could use Steri strips uh, if you have those in your kit, but you can also just use tape. Now, going back to kind of the suturing and the duct tape technique, you know, we're not just bags of blood. You can't just cover up a hole and keep all the blood underneath the skin and that be effective. That's not the way it works. It has to be in the vessels so that it can be delivered to tissue. So you can't just seal it up and kind of have that out of sight, out of mind medical principle. That's not really a thing. You want to close it up, bring the edges of the wound closer together so that it will promote healing, but it also still needs to drain and you still need to be able to clean it. So improvising steri strips. With that, let's talk about irrigating before we go to do any of these techniques. If all you have is some disinfected water, that's all you really need. Soap and water, even better, but water at a minimum for sure is all you need. Uh, as clean a water as possible. Now, if you're in a desert environment and this is the only water you have for hydration, then something that is as non-critical as a wound closure technique uh, is is not something you want to waste this water on. You need to focus on hydration as well. But if you do have some water available, then what you can do is irrigate that. And I like to irrigate with a full 32 ounce, you know, one liter bottle of disinfected water. And what I'll do is I'll raise this up as high as I possibly can above the wound. And then I'll let that stream pour down into that wound and that height it gives it enough velocity and pressure to when it hits that wound, it's got enough pressure behind it to actually clean it out. Uh, and I'll do at least a full 32 ounce bottle of water, disinfected, uh, if that's what I've got, to kind of clean that out before I close this wound up as best I can. After the wound is irrigated, then I want to kind of 
I say close it up, but I want to close the edges of the wounds together. I don't want to completely close any of the wounds up because I need them to still be able to drain so I don't cause any sort of abscess, any sort of infection. So I'm going to improvise some steri strips just by taking strips of duct tape. Usually use an odd number depending on how long the laceration is. In this case, I have three. So if my wound is right here, and I want to close that up, then similar to the steri strips principle, what I can do is take a piece of tape on one side, take a second piece of tape to kind of line up on the edges of the wound, and then I'll do a third piece of tape or more in the center on the opposite direction. And then what I can do is take that tape and I'll pull the top and the bottom one direction and seal it off. On this other piece of tape, I'll pull the opposite direction. And if you have sweat involved here, then of course you want to dry that off as best you can. And you could add additional tape to that to close that. So these two were pulled this direction, this one was pulled this direction, and that closes that wound up nicely. Now if you have a lot of blood here, then you need to back up to the control the bleed portion of this. This is not a bleeding control technique. This is the bleed is under control. I'm irrigating and cleansing the wound now and closing it up to promote healing. Then I'm going to dress and bandage over top of this. But notice how I have room in between if this laceration was running through here to where it can still drain, but it's closed together. If for some reason, these are not completely circumferential, so if for some reason this wasn't sticking as well as I needed it to, I can take additional tape and run parallel to the bones to kind of hold those ends down and do that on both sides to give it some extra strength. And if I need more than that, I can keep adding it parallel to the, burn, uh, parallel to the bone here until it sticks and holds like I want it to hold. And then from there, I'll dress and bandage over top of that, right? Because these are running parallel to the bone, it's not a circumferential wrap. I'm not worried about cutting circulation off, right? If I wrap completely around and it gets too tight and I have swelling from this injury, then there's a chance of reducing or uh, stopping the circulation down below distal to that. And I, that's not what I'm going for. So that is just a simple improvised steri strip technique with basically pulling in opposing directions to bring that wound closer together, All right? So, Improvised steri strips is probably the simplest way to close that wound. Zach, do you want to pull it? You want to go for it? Since he's been doing it to you. Hmm. Oh. Thank you, sir. May I have another? <laughs> <laughs> you had that coming. So what I'm using is bank line, and I've tied two overhands in there. I've showed you how to tie those. I guess those are not in this <laughs> first aid video. So for an overhead knot, you just tie a simple loop in, come back through, and you have your overhand knot. Just a little stopper knot to kind of keep those ends from unraveling. This is number 36 Tarred Mariner's line or bank line. So I'm using that to give it some support. And then I've got strips of tape here. What I'm gonna do is run this underneath that tape. And then fold the tape and make that a little wider. Once I've got it on there, I'm gonna fold the tape back over onto itself, basically wrapping it around the bank line. And I'll evenly space those all the way around.
That'll work. Now this one's exaggerated in size so that you can see it well. Once you size this according to the size of the actual injury that you're dealing with. If my laceration is right here, I'm going to run that basically parallel to that laceration. Unwrap those around nice and tight. Again, if you need extra adhesion because it's sweaty, then you can add some tape, and those are quite a bit longer than they need to be. But that creates some eyelets, if you will. I'm going to do that a second time. And these are things that you can pre-make, you know, to a three inch size or so. And I like to stick those on the inside of my waterproof notebook that I carry with me so that I can get to them rather quickly. But again, nothing needs closed that quickly. So you have time to make these. This will go on the opposite side. That'll go on the opposite side. Now I've got two sets of eyelets with a laceration running down the center. I can take some additional bank line, basically just like you're lacing up a pair of boots. Underneath that bank line. Pull that wound tight and together, and I like to wrap it around again. Kind of close that top off a little better. Lace that up and tie it off. And if you have to, you can milk these a little tighter before you tighten it up. And that is a lacing technique that you can use. Let me back that off. Is that pulling at all? Not right, not right now. It was. You have to check and recheck that all the time, but this a lot of times is all you need to bring a laceration together so that it can heal nicely. And that's another technique you can do, or the lacing technique. The more eyelets and tying points you have, the better for this. For this one, if you have bank line and a canvas needle or a sail needle, what you can do is take two strips of this tape, reinforce that by running some bank line underneath it. That basically just keeps it from ripping out. Run that parallel to the laceration. If you need to, you can put some additional strips to keep it down. And then you can take that needle and thread and what you're gonna do is carefully without puncturing the skin, come up behind the bank line in that tape. Go through where it's double layered. And continue on, just doing ah. kind of a whip stitch. Sorry. I'd have been all right. 
blooper. Just doing kind of a whip stitch and pulling that together as I go. So I go through both layers, behind that bank line, which is reinforcing it so it doesn't rip out. Hopefully not dragging too much hair through the wound. You rotate your arm towards me just a little bit. There you go. And then tighten it as I go. And that's gonna bring it together and it's still gonna have enough space to where it can drain. And I'm not causing any additional injury here yet. Do you want your glasses on? I do wear those, but not for this. And you'll continue this all the way down, this whip stitch, until you've completely closed that up, and then you'll finish it off. So I'm gonna fast forward here a little. Love it when it does that. When I get in a hurry and don't have my glasses on, that's when I poke people. I stopped doing this on myself because I poke myself so many times. And these needles really draw blood. It's a big ass needle. Pass out, piss my pants for a half hour. Does that give you confidence over there, Zach? I'm just waiting. It looks like I'm from a Tim Burton movie. <laughs> That's a cool technique like that. This one I think works the best. Every time my hair pulls, I think so, it's poking me. If this is the only one that makes the final cut, then I would understand, because this one works the best. The only time I would use that other one is if I didn't have a needle for some reason. Because mm. this one just closes it a lot nicer. Arm looks like a football. What's that? I think a football. Yeah. Can you feel it pulling the skin? Oh, it's pulling my hair, yeah. I keep thinking he's poking me. Well, we'll see. <laughs> see after we're done. I'm glad it's sterile, at least. <laughs> hmm? So I'm glad the needle's sterile. I'm gonna close that by going as tight as I can. Then I'm gonna go back through the exact same holes for a second loop. And I'm gonna leave myself a little loop here. I'm not gonna fully close that off. And it can get tough to get it through that second time. Now what I'm gonna do is take the end and go through that loop twice, making a round turn. Sometimes you have to take it off the needle to do that. Don't lose your needle. So I've got that loop from the second time around. Bring the ends through twice. Once. The bank line's coming apart on me. Twice. Now when I pull, it's gonna lock that round turn down on top of there. And you can just snip that off or you can leave it right there. All right, and let yourself. So this would be my preferred technique if I have a needle because it does a really good job of closing that wound up. And again, if this was starting to come up and I needed extra adhesion, I can run additional strips parallel to that bone and I'm not gonna have to worry about any CMS issues down here. So this is my preferred technique for improvising a wound closure with bank line, duct tape, and a sail needle. Beautiful. I thought you wanted to leave it on. 
You know how long that took me to sew? Yeah. You're just gonna throw away his good works like that? <laughs> it's better when you do it fast. You mean the little blonde hairs? Yeah, a few. <laughs> Definitely a few. Oh, you can see them they all They probably around. had some, yeah, where I drug them through with a yeah. needle. We got drugged through. That's a good one. You can see my follicle. <laughs> Same thing. Well, if it's still got the follicle, then you could also put those on your chin. You got the beginnings, <laughs> you got the beginnings of a good beard on that tape. You want me to sew it in there? Yeah, sew it in for me. This film needs is more cowbell. I wake up in the morning, put my pants on just like you. But when I do, I make gold records. <laughs> he gets real close. He gets in front of everybody. He's like. <laughs> what is the guts all hanging out with that brown sweater on? Oh, that's one of the best skits ever. <laughs> I know that'll make it. Show me your best move. <laughs> <laughs> Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> Grab my wrist. No, my other wrist. No, my other wrist. Another technique you can use is what I call the lacing technique. It still uses the tape that you have, uh, but you're using that wasn't uncomfortable. Don't make it weird. <laughs> I'm crying. <laughs> Hold on, I have my serious face there. Now it walked off. I'm gonna go get it. Oh, me too. Open once I cut my arm open, and she put a maxi pad on it and wrapped that up with a, uh, a bandage or a towel or something. I got the doctor and the doctor said that was the only thing probably that probably saved my life and I'm like <laughs>